helping in keeping America safe. Because it is the righteous who keep America safe. Not the White House. And uh, it is meetings like these meetings. It's people praying. It's people being churchgoers, proclaiming the faith, supporting missions. That keeps that country under God's mercy. And the minute the righteous dwindle, uh, we should be scared. And we should worry. Because then God will judge. And we have examples of that. Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham, and on and on. So, uh, great to be with you this morning. I would like to introduce myself through a video that we will play. It will give you an idea of what we do on a practical uh, day-to-day basis. So, let's see the video. I'm Muhammad's wife, and Muhammad is a church planter here in Tyre. As you know from the name, he's originally a Muslim. He's a Muslim convert to Christianity. One of the things I do at church is transport people back and forth to the church. Many people would like to come, but they can't unless we, we help them out with it. Most of the people that we get are Syrian refugees. They are originally from Syria, lived through quite some time in the war, and then they had to run away. In the beginning, they had to go from village to village in Syria, but then they found they need to leave the country and they came here. We paid heavily for that sign that you see in Tyre today, Tyre Center for the Gospel Proclamation. We could have put their entire center for English teaching. That's so easy to do that and avoid all the problems. But we wanted to tell the people that we are here to preach the gospel. We are here to share Jesus Christ with them. We are not here to teach them English. The focus of our ministry and of any ministry that we do is to plant a church, a lighthouse for Jesus Christ. So today in Tyre, Many people who live in Tyre know now that there is a local church in Tyre that serves and helps people and provides for the poor and provides for rent and provides medicine and provides medical help. And that in itself is a testament for Jesus Christ. The ultimate goal is within these three years that we are now renting is to buy. Either to buy the place we are in when you buy, خلاص, you're in your own premises, Hezbollah or other than Hezbollah, nobody can do anything to you. They can burn it, they can uh, try to destroy it, they can do anything they want, but they cannot kick us out. A lot of times they pressure the landlords. Like we were in a place, yeah, he, they pressured this landlord, so we had a problem with him, we had to leave. Now we're in this place three years, I just renewed my lease with him for three more years. But before I renewed my lease, he was threatened that if he does, and I don't know what they're going to do now. We just finished our fifth summer camp this year for the refugee children. It was just incredible today. The turnout was around 200 children. We had a medical clinic in which the turnover was 70 people came. And yet we're only 20 people trying to serve so many people. So we need people, we need laborers, we need people to answer the call of God to serve him in the Middle East and everywhere in Lebanon, in the Bekaa Valley, in Tyre. Uh, the need is great, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The need is great, the harvest is plenteous, and the laborers are few. A call that has been ringing throughout the ages, and there is always a need, and that's why we are in Tyre. And we are in the Middle East because we need to be the light of the world. Because God is opening the doors. Uh, you might hear from Fox News and CNN about suffering and destruction and bloodshed. But it is these times that God uses to open the doors, to open the hearts of people. 
Why? Because when you are worried about your earthly status, God is worried about your eternal status. And he will stop at nothing to bring you to him. He will destroy your home. He will destroy your country to bring you to him. Because that's what concerns him, is your eternity. Where you're going to spend eternity. That is the main reason why we are here. For people's eternity. So I would like to continue with you with a slideshow. That will give you a history and a little bit of geography of what we do and where we are. Uh, we are in Tyre. Tyre is a city that is known for its ruins. Many people came to Tyre. Most important of Jesus came to Tyre. Uh, Paul the Apostle came to Tyre. Uh, Alexander the Great came to Tyre. Nebuchadnezzar came to Tyre. And Tyre was a very lucrative and wealthy uh, city. Uh, and was able to conquer other places through trade. So we're in Tyre for God's glory. This is the gate of Tyre. This is most probably where Jesus came through. And here in the back is the Hippodrome, the horse race arena of the Romans. We have the largest one in the world. Next. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. As God is being glorified in Tyre, we are craving for more of his glory. The reason we are there is for God to be glorified. Tyre is 95% Muslim Shiites. No light. The first time I came there, I felt the Lord saying, go reclaim the land. And that's when we started our church plant. Next. This is the Middle East. A place of the Bible, beauty, and bombs. Uh, everywhere. Uh, problems. Yemen, Syria, Egypt. Libya, Iraq, it's just a hotbed. Uh, and that's where God has called us, to the Middle East. Uh, the Middle East is the hub of the second largest religion in the world and the most antagonistic towards the gospel. And that's why we need to co focus and concentrate on that place. Next. The city of Tyre lies on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea, about 83 kilometers south of Beirut, Tyre is the fourth largest city of Lebanon. It was an island celebrated for its beauty. Tyre emerges today from the debris of centuries. In ages past, this great Venetian city ruled the seas and founded prosperous colonies such as Gadiz and Carthage. Our desire is that it will, make, it will find many lighthouses for Jesus Christ all over the Middle East. Next. This is Lebanon. We are here. Uh, 20 miles from Israel. The closest city to us is Haifa. If you've been to Israel and you've been to Haifa, you were 20 miles away from where we are. In Arabic, it's called Sur. And this is Tripoli. This is where we have our second outreach center in Lebanon. And this is Syria. So in the Syrian crisis, influx of refugees into Lebanon. Why? Because Lebanon is a democracy. There is freedom of speech. Things are easy there. You can come, you can talk, you can do anything you want. So we have the largest community of refugees in the Middle East. Two million and a half Syrian refugees. And we are a four million people population. Next. A lighthouse in the kingdom of darkness, Tyre Center for the Gospel Proclamation. Next. This is Tyre Church. It started with the center. First, we came, we rented a place, and we loved on people, just like Jesus did. It's about love. That's the name of the game. You love people, you show them God's love, and God changes their hearts, and they come to you. And uh, God opens their do the doors, and we have a tendency to close them. Let's not do that. Let's love on people. So from this, Tire Church came. This is my family, four chickens and a rooster. Uh, my wife, Leah, Selena, Lynn, and Sarah, and Peter. Uh, in 2009, we went down to Tyre to plant a church. Next. These are former co laborers that were with us uh, the Swifts from Michigan, the Lees from Korea, and uh, Noah George from Alaska. Next and Walid Bitar, whose picture is not there. Now, these are 
the co-laborers that we have today, the Todds from Alabama, uh, Drew Robertson from Ohio and his family, Edwin from Holland, Skyler and Charlie from the States. Uh, great team. They love the Lord. No fears. They live in the stronghold of Hezbollah, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where they tell you it's not, it cannot be done, they're doing it. They're living there with their children. This is part of our meeting, mainly Muslim people. What's happening in the Middle East and in Lebanon particularly is a phenomenon. Five years ago, you couldn't get five Muslims together in a room to tell them about Jesus. Today they come by the hundreds inside the church to hear about Jesus. If we do nothing, we've definitely taught them how to be tolerant of Christians. And that is a great job to do. Next. Part of our meetings, worship time, Sunday school, next. Uh, our mercy center, we give out food portions, we do operations, we give out medicine, we do seminars. We take care of people in every way we can. Every way God provides to love on people, we love on them without any conditions. The only condition we have is they have to hear the gospel. Why? Because we believe the gospel is the answer. Not feeding them, not making them healthy, and not educating them. If you do that, they go to hell educated, they go to hell healthy. We don't want them to do that. Next. This is our sewing shop. We bring in uh, refugee uh, moms and let them work, sew, get a little bit of money for what they do in order to survive because they cannot work outside. And then... They sew clothes for their children. Now they're sewing blankets uh, for the winter. As I am here speaking, they are sewing blankets so we can distribute them to people. Next, we have a bookstore. It's a medium of interaction with the people uh, where people come, use the internet, drink coffee, uh, read books, uh, photocopy, etc. Next, also I have another ministry that I do in churches in the Middle East. We have musical teams, two of them. We join together in going into the churches in the Middle East and encouraging them and giving them an opportunity to evangelize. So they take this time to invite people to hear the gospel. They play music and I preach. We have summer camps. Uh, every summer, 1,200 Syrian refugee kids, Palestinian refugees. We bring them in for three days. We love on them. We feed them, we play with them, we take them to the beach, we take them to the river to swim. And we do everything we can to show them that God loves them. Next. Uh, everywhere we do that. On the streets, we did a soccer camp and we sewed the uh, suits for them. Uh, in the villages, in schools, and we give them Bibles. When they are good and they do well, we give them Bibles to read. Next. This is our... Tripoli Center, we're doing the same thing in Tripoli, just like we did in Tyre. Tripoli is a Sunni city, Tyre is a Shiite city, two different groups. Uh, and it's interesting, I'm a former Sunni, today a Christian serving in a Shiite area. <laughs> what a mix. <laughs> Next, this is our Jordan uh, operation. The same idea, the same thing is being applied in Jordan Amman. Next. This is our Syria operation in Sweda. We have a young man who's serving the Lord there with us. And this is the church, the people that meet in Syria. What Syria needs is not the UN, nor America, nor Russia. They need the gospel. And that's what we're doing. We're taking the gospel to them. Next. Uh, God is saving. This is Rida, a Shiite fellow. This is Nadala, a Sunni fellow. Nobody can put a Shiite and a Sunni together except Jesus Christ. <laughs> other than that, they will kill each other. And why we're there? God would get the glory. Gospel would get global. Glorified will be gathered. Next. You might be wondering of how you can glorify God with us. First and foremost, your prayers. I'm standing here today. When I leave, don't forget me. Pray for me. Uh, this work entire, many people in the beginning said, it can't be done. You're crazy, Mohammed. 
you go to stronghold of Hezbollah to do this. This is nuts. It was done. Not because Muhammad is smart or tough. Because many people are praying. That's why. Many people all over the world are praying for this work. And we want to, you to join in praying for this work and for this vision of planting lighthouses all over the Middle East. Uh, you can come personally. The guys in Winston-Salem, every six months, they send a team. Three, four guys come, encourage us. Don't think we're supermans. We're not. We need somebody to come say, brother, we love you. We want to stand by you. We want to help you. We're praying for you to keep on. And then finally, committing to provide. If God has blessed you, don't spend it on yourself. Bless others with it. That's what God wants. He wants you to bless others. He wants you to let Him be glorified and lifted up. And finally, I'm here to plead with you to rise to the challenge of open doors in the Middle East. Sacrifice and support. There's a different story in the Middle East, other than the one you hear at CNN and Fox News. There are people getting saved. There are churches being planted. That's the story. We want to be part of it. The other story, I don't care about it. Who rules, who comes into the chair, who doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that God be glorified. Next. Tire, are you for God's glory? That's the name of the game this morning. Do you want to see God glorified? I have a little story that I tell uh, in closing. One day, Hussein came to me in Tyre. And he said, Mr. Mohammed, my wife is in the hospital. They are not releasing her. I have to pay $200 more. The bill came out to be more than I could afford. My people are not helping me. Would you please help me? He said, definitely, Hussein. We're here in the business of good works. That's why we're here. I want to help you. Let's go to the hospital. We went to the hospital, checked the bill, saw that there is a need, paid, gave him a Bible, and sent him home. After two days, Hussein comes to me. He says, Mr. Muhammad. I said, yes. He says, do you have a big cross? I said, Hussein, why do you need a cross? He says, I want to hang it around my neck, go in the village, and tell my people, the God of the Christians is better than your God. <laughs> That's God being glorified. I love these stories. They give glory to God. Awesome God. We need to glorify. So thank you for having me. God bless you.